It feels like there have been so many new AI browsers being released and everyone is talking about it. They come with a pretty big promise to save me a lot of time, to automate all of my work and to make me that much more productive. So this week I wanted to put them to the test to see, are they really worth using? So I primarily wanted to test with the two browsers that were released recently, Dia by the browser company and Comet by Perplexity. For context, both of these are AI browsers, meaning they are desktop apps that you download and you would use instead of like a Google Chrome. And both have paid versions, but this week I'll be using their free version and I'll be using them for a variety of my tasks this week. So let's get into it. So first up is shopping. I have a friend later this year who's getting married and I still haven't found a dress yet. So let's try to find one. Both browsers managed to provide me with options and links to check out, which is nice. I wonder how practical this is for shopping though. I feel like shopping though, isn't necessarily about finding the right dress immediately. I feel like part of the experience and part of a good shopping experience is having some level of browse. Like you wanna see what your options are so you know that you're getting the best one at the best price. But once I found some dresses that look good, they were both able to help me find discount codes on checkout, which is great. But there was one big difference between them. Dia has limited ability, if at all, to be able to interact with the elements on your screen. Like it can read all of the information, but it can't actually click the buttons for you. Comet, however, can. So it actually went by itself to find these discount codes and try each of them in which was pretty cool. But at this point, it might just be cool. So in my next test, I wanted to try to have these browsers act as my personal travel assistant. I wanted it to help me plan a weekend trip to Vancouver with flights, activities, and restaurants all compiled in a Google Doc. I was really excited about this use case. Like I'm such a terrible trip planner, which is why I feel like I never go on trips. But the first thing I wanted the browsers to do was be able to find me the cheapest flights. I wanted them to consider all of the weekends remaining this year and find me the cheapest flights for a weekend trip. And this is where Comet's browser control struggled so hard. Like I initially thought, oh, it's just slow, but it's thorough. Maybe the best use of Comet is to give it these long running tasks and to check in on it once it's done. But that's actually not the case at all. It was just slow because it was incredibly confused. It spent so long just clicking on random buttons and then at the end, it just returned some random flights. It did manage though to come up with all of the information for a full itinerary and put it into a Google doc, which is nice, I guess. So I don't have to copy and paste it. And Dia, because it can't actually click through things, it did manage to come up with an answer, but it was also a one-way flight. So it was also borderline unusable. Dia also did a decent job though, finding things to do and restaurants. And although Dia can't control your screen the way Comet does, it does sometimes let you insert information into your Google Doc. But in my experience, this was pretty finicky whether or not it would actually show up. And I also wanted to try to get some real work done with it. So I tried to have them both help me brainstorm and prep for this video. So I started out with both of them trying to fill their context with information about my channel and my videos. And then I discussed with them the concept that I had for this video to try to have them draft a rough structure for me. And I think what it ended up coming up with was fine. Like there are certainly some pieces in there that seem useful. It's just not useful as a whole as is. With these things, I think there is just such a gap between what I'm looking for and what it thinks I'm looking for. And if a human were to do these tasks for me, they would probably be asking me clarifying questions. Like you're asking for a quick structure of this video, but does that mean title? Are you looking for a quick script? Are you looking for thumbnail ideas? Instead of just guessing. And of course I can follow up with it and clarify, but personally, I don't think I should have to do that. Like, I feel like there must be a better UX besides it just generating something and me having to jump through all of these hoops to transform this output into the format that I'm looking for. And lastly, I wanted to try out a feature that is present in both of these browsers. It's this concept called shortcuts or skills. They are essentially prompts that you can save and reuse 
whatever you want. For both of these browsers, they do provide templates and community examples, which is really nice. So you get to see some examples of how you can actually really leverage these AI browsers. And when I was looking through it, honestly, a lot of these sounded very cool, like being able to pull inspiration from different websites or this color analysis thing. But when I would actually use them, the results were just fine. Like I'm not really blown away. It feels like standard LLM responses. But like I said, these browsers have just recently launched. So maybe these communities will have better examples over time. So then that brings us to the question on everyone's minds, which is, are these AI browsers even good? Are they worth using? I think there are clearly benefits to using them. Like if you were a student, it could help you when you're drafting an essay, or it could help you quickly clarify a topic from your lecture notes. Essentially anywhere where you might be copying and pasting from one tab into ChatGPT, I think would be a great use case. You could just ask ChatGPT directly in the tab without having to copy and paste. I also want to give them a lot of props on their design. They are surely spending big bucks on it, and I have to say it is paying off. They really do stand out, and I think in consumer, it does really matter. But I have two main concerns. The first being, I just don't think the tech is quite there yet. Like if you have a human assistant doing these tasks for you, in a way you kind of have a thought partner. They try to understand what you're trying to do, align, versus just blindly execute. Like for example, if you're trying to plan a weekend trip, they would try to understand what a weekend trip looks like to you. They would ask how many days you wanna go for, they would remind you that Thanksgiving's coming up, so maybe you already have plans for that weekend. And using the AI browser for these tasks, you can kind of work around this, like by having the assistant ask you questions to clarify the requirements before executing. But practically, I just don't think you can put the responsibility on the user to do that. Also, I'm just really torn about this browser control. Like the browser control in comment right now is crazy, but not having it in Dia is also kind of crazy too. Comment will literally just go off and start clicking a bunch of random buttons and get so confused. But when I ask Dia to put something in a Google doc and it tells me it can't, that just feels super limiting. And second, I still have a lot of questions around whether we need a product like this. Like in a perfect world where all of the tech is there, how much time is this really saving for me? Like, I feel like I'm always searching for ways to use it. And when I find something, I'd kind of want it to be like a 20X improvement, but it's just kind of better. Like practically speaking, the use case where I feel like I actually used it the most would be if I was watching something on YouTube and I had a quick question I wanted to Google search. It was nice having the assistant on the side so I could just quickly look something up, like where a restaurant was or something. And maybe conveniences like that would make this worth it for you, especially since a lot of that functionality is included in the free version. But for me, I'll probably stick with Chrome until I find a use case that really justifies using it. But yeah, let me know in the comments if you would use an AI browser or if you have a use case that you think would be super useful with one. If you like these reviews, I just did one on Sora, which is somewhere here. But thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.